behind you. The universe is still here. Black holes are growing. Lots of other stuff's going on. What I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to talk about uh, black holes. Um, what's great about black holes are they uh, actually are fantastic objects. Uh, they no one really knows what's going on in the inside, but there's some very nice properties that can be observed from the outside, and uh, they do indeed exist. The body of experimental evidence is overwhelming. Of course, you cannot see a black hole because it's, it's black. It doesn't admit light, but when things get near a black hole, as you can well imagine, we're in a very extreme environment. as a high uh, gravitational field high accelerations, particles radiate when they're accelerated, and uh, of course charged particles radiate when they're accelerated, and uh, you can observe uh, powerful x-rays, and occasionally you might have some black hole and uh, a large, it encounters a large cloud or a large cloud encounters it, of course motion is all relative, and when that's happening you get a big burst of x-rays, and those have been measured um, associated with the our own galaxy and it's very centered it looks like there's a black hole so what I'm going to do is is cover uh, the basic physics of it and despite the fact that we don't know what's going on inside the black hole uh, we can certainly talk about what a black hole does to things near it and that's going to be the emphasis here and also on estimating what is the event horizon associated with the black hole so I'll show you how to do that so I think I've talked enough, um, and uh, let me move on with the um, some presentation here. Uh, once again, thank you. Um, I've noticed I've got a few more subscribers here. I do appreciate the uh, your feedback, um, and I'll be uh, talking to you all soon in one way or another. Take care. Bye bye. Greetings, everyone. It's good to see you all. What we're going to talk about today is another very uh, interesting subject, the physics related to black holes. I'm going to try to keep this simple, and it turns out that a lot of it is quite simple. Now, a black hole is created when the force of gravity in something such as a remnant star is so strong it overcomes all sorts of pressures. Uh, it's the ultimate victory of gravity. And the black hole has some well-defined properties from the outside, but a complete mystery from the inside. Measurable mass, spin, and a well-defined boundary called the event horizon that characterizes the outside. Inside, we really don't know. And the key point is once you're inside that event horizon, you can't escape. Light can escape. Matter cannot escape. Uh, let's talk about this event horizon because it's a good way of characterizing uh, a black hole. Now, from the general theory of rel relativity, as you know, gravity is warped near a high mass. And those space-time lines are warped so that, for example, light is deflected, and the closer the light passes to a black hole, the more it's deflected. Of course, imagine yourself on one side of the black hole. Light that is behind the black hole never escapes. There's another aspect which I'm going to talk about. Time essentially stops near a black hole because, again, of the warp of space-time. Time stops. Um, the effect of the bending of light is called uh, gravitational lensing. And uh, again, as I said, the closer the light approaches, the more it bends. So here's an example of what this kind of thing looks like. Imagine some massive body and light from both sides is approaching. And then you see as the light near the body is there, it gets dispersed quite a bit, so you, you're going to get all sorts of uh, interesting distortion effects. You're going to get uh, maybe multiple images. The image is going to be stretched out, as you can see, because the light is being stretched. It uh, kind of acts like an, a lens, but uh, it's sort of a weird lens. It's not anything like a uh, typical optical lens that you have experience with. And what can result from that is you're going to see maybe even multiple images of the same object. So let's suppose there's a galaxy 
somewhere behind that uh, or near the black hole and you're going to see two images of light. This in fact has been verified. A very interesting phenomenon. How do we learn about the event horizon? How do we derive it? Here's an energy argument. Uh, the potential energy of the field is so great that something traveling at the speed of light cannot escape. So we can actually solve this equation quite well. Very, very nice way, simple way of solving it. And we can, for a black hole of mass m, that's all we need, we can define the radius from which there is no escape. That radius is called the Schwarzschild radius. Schwarzschild was a physicist, uh, he was actually an, an officer during World War I, just at the time of general relativity coming out, and he came up with this notion of this uh, point of no escape called the Schwarzschild radius. So what we'll do is um, we're going to go through a little bit of easy math. Now one nice thing about these videos is you can stop them if you like and go back and you can check the arithmetic and make sure I'm right. Uh, let's suppose we had a escape velocity. The energy of something has to equal the gravitational potential energy. That's really represented by the first equation. Go ahead and solve it and you come out with a nice formula for R. And it's just proportional to the mass. If R depends only on the mass for a black hole, let's do an example and just get a sense of how big that event horizon is, the short shield radius. So let's take a, um, an example mass of uh, 10 solar masses. You put in the numbers, I've given you the constants there, and R equals 30 kilometers. In other words, this thing is about the size of a city. Something 10 times as massive as the sun is the size of the city. A useful formula for you to keep in mind is since the um, the Schwarzschild radius is proportional to the mass, you can scale it relative to something like the solar mass, which we're used to thinking of it. And that equation is shown there. So the event horizon is uh, the ratios of that. And you can make a plot. Since we know there are no black holes less than five solar masses, uh, that's why I have that region excluded. But after that, it's linear. So for example, uh, 10 solar masses at the Schwarzschild radius is 30 kilometers. Now, there are really two types of black holes. There are stellar remnants. We've talked about neutron stars. And neutron stars that collapse further turn into um, these uh, massive stellar 